we're going to work on Mandy's feet. And while I access the feet, I'm also working on the legs. You can see this movement around the femur into the hips, moving the toes, the tarsals around. I believe Mandy's having a little more problem with this right foot, so I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to check along the tibia. There's a soft thumb pad press into the flesh. Right along the shin. Tons of options here. You can move in so many different ways. I'm gonna check out along tibialis anterior. The reason I wind up working musculature in the lower leg is much like we talked about in previous videos with the hand and wrist, the forearm extensors and flexors cross this junction. So lots of hand and wrist pain can come from here. Same thing happens with the feet. You have tibialis anterior, the peroneals, gastrocnemius, soleus in the back and the posterior. These muscles pull over the ankle into the foot and sometimes cause foot pain. Many cases of plantar fasciitis for instance, I find people are having problems with gastrocnemius, the muscles on the calves, and soleus. Overly tight, it's pulling, it's causing pain, trigger point pain into their feet. And then lo and behold, I have plantar fasciitis, which often symptom wise, the symptoms can reduce from good body work. I'm gonna grab and shake out the lower leg. I'm checking Mandy's facial expression to see if her hybrometer goes off. She will flinch if it's too much. Working tibialis anterior, a little bit of the peroneals, this line right across the shin. I'm slowly working from lower up. I'm gonna find an area of density with my forearm. While I'm doing this, I'm compressing the calf. I'm also able to work through my own spine and hips. These little circles are actually opening my hips, allowing me a little bit of a stretch. I think about right there. How's that, Mandy? Yep. I'll usually ask the receiver for feedback just to make sure. I'll just check their face to see. I'm giving some length to the calves by pulling along the foot here with my forearm. I'm going to find a good spot and I can relax my hands. Now I'm lengthening and stretching the calf while I'm leaning in with my left forearm right into that spot in the tibialis anterior. I can roll back and forth. That feels a little more pointed right there. And then I can a little pressure off, back on again. Lots of movement. In addition to delivering extremely effective body work, I'm always doing my best to create ease, relaxation, and calm. Mandy's gone. She's elsewhere at the moment. If I'm doing this, it means that I can move and stretch and go, oh, my neck right there. Little stretch for me. Then I'm back off again. Right into, yep. She, she uh, jerked just a little bit. It's, it's sharp because it's my thumb. I'm going to move back to my forearm and elbow. But I wasn't trying to give her too much. I'm just trying to follow this line. Back and up. I'm going to use a tool that's a little more broad. I'm going to check her facial expression without asking this time. 
And I think she's good right there. Working on the lower leg and the foot, you can see that as I, I press through the calf here, there's some foot movement. I'm just checking this along the tibia. See, even this small amount of pressure, a little bit of movement in the foot. I'm gonna put a broad pressure with the heel of my hand across the foot here. The pressure is actually sliding out a little bit. I can stack my body in a way that allows me to sink down and glide across. And then for a sort of a pin and stretch, I'm going to press through the adductors because it's pulling down through here. I'm going to maintain contact in the adductors right there. I can shift my body position. Always the eye gaze. I will check and make sure Mandy's not grimacing from the pressure. Very slow glacial sort of movement along the foot there. Right into the adductors. You can tell I got a little bit probably into gracilis right there. Just gonna find a spot and hang out. When you do this at first, you may find it to be a little bit more challenging on your hips and legs. Your hip mobility and legs will just change over time as mine have from doing the work regularly. The body mechanics of this are far superior to the table in my experience. It's much easier for me to deliver pressure this way and I can use all of my body weight. If necessary, I could use my feet to stand. You could see that little bit of white spot almost where the blood was pressed away like a sponge and then came back in. I'm gonna work my way down the foot a little bit towards the toes, right into there. Checking her, and there we go. Her facial expression said, hey, too much. So I backed off right there. And again, I'm holding. Now I'm gonna mobilize and see what happens see what movement just too much in the foot just a little too much I've backed off I'm gonna focus just on the foot and I'm gonna change my hand position I'm gonna move glide and slide I'm turning my hand from my position counterclockwise sliding along the base of the foot plantar surface I slide off, you can see white, 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 white turns flush of pink as blood flow returns to that area. It's really good for the tissue therapeutic inflammation. I'm going to hook this pad right along. How's that in there? There we go. I'm checking it a bit more just because it was uncomfortable. I don't want to hurt her feet. Sliding that way. <sighs> Always working on breathing mindfully. Those little sighs help the receiver relax and let go. Remind them to breathe without me saying it. Just to change position. I'm going to change it up for a minute. We've worked on the foot. I'm going to bring her into what I call kickstand. Normally there's a 45 degree angle at the femur to the mat. It allows me to put knees on either side of the shin so she's stacked. And I can feel right into there. Ticklish. Aha. So big and broad. There we go. Not as ticklish. Gives me some length tractions the lumbar spine 
I'm allowed to lengthen my arms and lean my head back so I can stretch and lengthen. It's pulling into the calf. Too much there, Mandy? Just shifted? Okay. She gave me a little movement. I was just checking in to make sure. Now that same pressure with fingers is a little bit easier now that we've softened that. When we started, it was a little more ticklish. Usually when I find someone is ticklish, they're responding to pointed pressure. If you broaden it, it's not so bad. I'm going to bring her leg up. The femur is always going to be at 90 degrees, and you're going to see this. I'm going to bring her just past 90, so that when I lengthen my leg completely, I can pull her to 90 degrees. That's a big compression to the hamstrings, semimembranosus, semitendinosus. Right past 90 degrees, my leg is lengthened, I'm leaning back. You'll notice that I'm grabbing above the ankle. If I just grab on the foot, sometimes people will get a little separation that feels uncomfortable. Slowly pulling into the hamstrings. Bringing her just past 90 degrees. I lengthen my leg fully so I can pull her onto my foot. Then gonna move inch or two down and repeat. So you'll notice that I'm not pushing my leg into her thigh as much as I'm pulling her thigh onto my foot. Big compression to the hamstrings, semimembranosus, semitendinosus. If I hook my toes inside so that she can roll open, I'm then going to use my right foot to press right into the hamstrings. If I decide to double up, meaning I work on two things at once, I can press in the hamstrings while using the fingers right in the foot here. She was having some tenderness earlier where we softened some of this up. I'm trying to see if I can get right in there. Moving the toe around, accessing some of that tissue underneath where I'm pressing. a little more distal, meaning towards the toes, out away from the center. It takes some time to learn how to use your feet, but this is extremely effective and an easy way to access the hamstrings nearly all the way back to the ischial tuberosities. Find a good spot, deliver some pressure, and then again, back into the foot there. Little cross fiber, some pressure and traction over the big toe. All of this movement here. Right in there. Should give me a little response. It's never about overwhelming the receiver, but I do want to make contact. Now that I've got this contact, I can move towards the heel. I can move away from the heel. I think that probably feels a little bit better. She nodded her head to let me know, yes. Now, if I go towards the arch or away from the arch, which of those feels better? This way or that way? Towards that way, meaning this direction? The other way? Okay, towards the arch. There we go. So then I'm almost feeling like I'm twisting out over the tarsal. My hands started to get tired, so I'm going to switch. 
I'm gonna keep this guy up and now I'm actually gonna grab with this hand and rotate open. Just like I was doing, it's gonna be less pointed. Now hold right there. Lengthening, mobilizing, tractioning, stretching skin. Letting her body choose a better position. I'm gonna use the side of this finger to roll through. As we shoot these videos, in many instances, I actually just make stuff up. And when I say that, what I mean is, I am improvising in the moment based on what I find with Mandy's foot. I'm trying to find a spot that feels good. I'm hooking right here and then sliding over lateral towards the arch. It's amazing how much release and relaxation you can get from working someone's feet slowly, purposefully, while breathing with intention right there. I'm going to grab and then I'm going to reinforce with these two fingers and then slide right into there. I'm going to hold that back to the foot again. You'll see maintaining these multiple points of contact. It feels great. It feels good to me as a receiver. It allows me to move around more. And I feel that the clients release more because there's more body contact. Half of what we do as massage therapists is provide touch. What I'm able to do in a mat-based session is provide more touch because I can use all of my body. I can use three points or more of contact. And I'm working over more surface area, larger portion of skin. I'm gonna traction out over that since I was applying pressure. You can see the color change there. I'm gonna mobilize. I'm gonna move the tarsals back and forth. the foot around. Don't be afraid to just mobilize someone that moving them around. I'm going to keep the top of my foot underneath the knee so I can traction here. I can lengthen and pull. Stacked my leg as a bolster so I could come in right here with a forearm or stretch to the calf. I've, I've stacked my leg in this nice little cradle. I still have to use my hand to support the foot, but I'm leaning with my forearm right into the plantar surface of the foot. I can slightly change position if I want more elbow. Right in there. I've been joking with the Psyche Truth crew about shooting the party sequence where I drink a beer while I'm working on people. Um, I like talking about the party sequence because it allows me to work clothed. It's not uncommon for me to be at a party, grab someone, start working on them, and then grab other people, show them how to work on each other. It's a big part of what I do, and it allows a more playful exploration of touch and intimacy in a group context. Again, placing pressure. Oh, now this pin and stretch. I'm using the right forearm, now I'm mobilizing the foot and toes right into there, opening that up, big, broad pressure. 
Aha! I knew it was gonna happen eventually. Right in there, elbow. We were using the forearm up to the elbow. I felt like I was in this position long enough that I wanted to switch. So I'm just gonna play with propping her to be able to use the opposite foot. I'm gonna switch my body position. I'm actually gonna drape my other leg over. And then yeah, I think I can get right into there to switch arms. There's not quite as much bolstered support, but she's still getting some movement through there. If I decide I don't like that, I can change this in myriad ways. I'll sometimes even use, in my case, my chest, just so I can lean in. Giving her a little traction, a little internal rotation. Right in there. And I can back off. I'm gonna see what I feel through tarsal movement, toes. Feels much more pliable, soft. She's not giving me much, if any response to her face so it's not too tender like when we started. Some deeper compression. I've changed my body position to this comfortable squat. Again, as I'm as I'm moving, I'm able to move my legs and hips around in a way that feels comfortable to me. If I feel like I want to sit in one spot, it feels nice to stretch there, I can. Just don't want to do anything that feels uncomfortable for myself or the receiver. Now, I switched to a knuckle because we, we built up to this. She gave me just a little bit of some movement because she was starting to run away. It's firmer right along here, along the heel. Checking her facial expression to make sure that the pressure is good. Going slow. Moving along. You still give me a little bit. She's like, thank goodness he stopped. And then back to more mobility. Really working all of this tissue. If I use the heel of my hand, I can slide. So many options. Once you start playing and stop working, when you learn how to work on a mat and use body weight so that you can glide, slide, and move easily with a free range of motion, you can see the toes move from the work I'm doing on the plantar surface. So much of a session is going to be tailored to the client. What do they need? What's going on? Where do they have tension? First and foremost, I'm just going to work on the client. If they tell me they have leg pain, I'm going to work on that first and try to figure out, hey, well, what's going on? They want to be heard. Same thing would happen with your wife or loved one if you were working on them. If they say their shoulders hurt, you want to work on those. You can see the toe movement from this glide along my thenar eminence, along my thumb, right in there. Yeah, 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 yeah.
just to break it up at the end, this little bit of a jostle. It's really funny to me because I'm working on her feet and when I look up, I can see her neck move. It's part of the, the way I trick clients into letting go because by the time I got to her neck, oh, she'd be soft already. I think that was good footwork for today. How's that side feel? Yeah, yeah. If I was spending my time, I would probably work on both, but for today we just demonstrated on the right foot since she was having more problems. If they were having more problems on the right side, I might do this twice as long and do the other half as much just to balance them out. Thank you again for tuning in to our videos here at Psyche Truth.